Hello and welcome to Cryos International webinar series. My name is Mileros Rete and I'm Clinic Account Manager here at Cryos International. This video is part of a webinar series that consists of educational videos intended to answer some of the questions you may have on your fertility journey. Today we will cover some of the indications prior to fertility treatment as well as four different treatment types, ICI, IUI, IVF and ICSI. We will start off with Dr. Georgiou, who is a gynecologist, and will talk to us about some of the indications prior to treatment, hormone stimulation, and egg retrieval. We will then move on to Cornelia, uh, Cornelia Meyer, who has an MSc in embryology, and will talk to us about IUI and ICI, ICI insemination. And finally, we will welcome Chris Christodoulos, who is a senior embryologist here at Cryos, and will talk to us about IVF and ICSI. And without further ado, we welcome you, Dr. Georgiou. Hello, my name is Giorgio uh, Giorgiou. I'm one of the gynecologists uh, working uh, with uh, Cryos. And we're going to go through uh, the indications for uh, couples uh, that need fertility treatment, the examinations required, the hormonal stimulation, and the procedure of the egg retrieval. So who uh, needs uh, fertility treatment? Uh, women who had their tubes uh, removed, women who have a blockage uh, on their tubes, women with um, a condition called endometriosis and uh, women who have ovulation disorders, women who tried before um, to induce ovulation or had uh, intrauterine insemination and they didn't succeed, uh, women of advanced um, uh, maternal age, uh, men with impaired uh, functional uh, production of, uh, of sperm, May women who want to preserve fertility because they're about to have a cancer uh, therapy and um, also uh, couples who have a genetic disorder that they don't want to pass it through uh, their uh, children. And uh, uh, usually the tests that uh, are required before these treatments are a reproductive hormone uh, test with thyroid functioning test, uh, uh, gynecological ultrasound assessment, uh, along with complete uh, blood uh, panel and urine panel, um, uh, infectious diseases focused on the sexually transmitted uh, diseases needed, and sometimes and some additional tests are needed, uh, which are more specific, like hysterosalpingography, hysteroscopy, or laparoscopy, or maybe both. And for the male partner, um, a sperm analysis is needed, a complete blood count and urine panel is needed, and also infectious diseases focus on sexually transmitted diseases, uh, uh, pre-requirement test. So as uh, the word says, Hormonal stimulation, hormones are needed to be injected. They are injected every day. Um, uh, it's uh, FSH hormones uh, or LH or maybe both of them is needed for the stimulation uh, along with uh, some other injections which uh, are to prevent ovulation. And the final injection is given to, uh, for maturation of the eggs and uh, which is called chorionic uh, human chorionic gonadotropy. The, um, the, the amount, uh, the dose and uh, the timing of the injections will be worked out with your doctor to explain to you how and when you should take them. And uh, you need about seven to 14 days to, to conclude uh, the treatment. Um, along uh, the hormonal stimulation, your doctor may ask you to have uh, some uh, blood test to check the hormones and also um, ultrasound scans to, to see the progress of the, of the eggs. So after, the, after the, the eggs are ready, then the final injection is done, which is, we said, the human gonadotropin. gonadotropin. And around 34 to 36 hours later, then the 
a procedure called uh, oocyte retrieval happens. This happens in a usually in a clinic setting with a woman being sedated and taking painkillers. Uh, this is done through uh, transvaginal uh, aspiration. And uh, is, uh, what is actually done is that the, um, uh, the eggs are, take, are removed from the follicles through a needle which is connected with a suction device. And then the eggs are uh, pulled into a um, cultured media, medium and, and then they are uh, incubated. Then if, if the process is going to uh, proceed into an IVF, then the healthy, good looking and mature eggs are gonna be mixed uh, with the sperm and uh, hopefully uh, embryos will be created. And talking about uh, IVF is one of the treatment options that uh, you might have, uh, which uh, all the previous steps are needed and uh, you might have this random mixture of, of, of the eggs and the sperm, or you may have the specific one that one sperm is, is joined with an egg and you have the ICSI method. And uh, also just uh, um, to mention, there are two additional methods of uh, fertility treatments, which are called intrauterine insemination and uh, intracervical insemination, where no hormonal stimulation is needed and no egg retrieval is needed. But this is going to be explained uh, more thoroughly by a colleague uh, embryologist. So thank you very much uh, for your attention and I wish you the best. Thank you, Dr. Georgiou, for your presentation. We will now move on to Cornelia, who will explain to us two types of inseminations, ICI and IOI. Thank you, Mila, for your kind introduction. And also thank you to Dr. Georgiou for providing us with excellent information about the various indications for fertility treatment and the relevant examinations that are necessary in order to find the appropriate treatment type. I'm Cornelia and I would like to welcome you. And within the next couple of minutes, I would like to give you insights into two different types of artificial insemination, the ICI and the IUI. Artificial insemination often is the first cause of action when assisted reproductive technology or ART is needed. And it is a method that does not require highly sophisticated technology. As I just mentioned, ICI and IUI both are treatment types for artificial insemination. So they're the same category, but what is actually the difference between them? Well, it is simply the place where the sperm sample is deposited. And you can easily memorize that when you have a look at the meaning um, of the abbreviations. ICI stands for intracervical insemination and IUI stands for intrauterine insemination. And um, so already the name of the treatment um, indicates the sperm's destination that is either the cervix or the uterus. And um, to visualize this difference, let us recall um, some details of female anatomy. So here in this picture, you can see the female reproductive system that mainly consists of the vagina, which is the outer part. Then you have the cervix, that is um, the neck or the womb. And the womb is also referred to as uterus, and the uterus is connected to the fallopian tubes, and they are attached to the ovaries that contain the eggs. So when a woman conceives naturally, um, the sperm have to travel from the vagina through the cervix and to the uterus, and then up into the fallopian tubes. And um, at the time of ovulation, and when an egg is released into the fallopian tubes and when sperm are already awaiting the egg in the fallopian tube, they can meet and they can unite and they can lead to fertilization. So the meeting point for sperm and egg is the fallopian tube. And when artificial insemination is, um, is, is used or is performed, then for the ICI, the intracervical insemination, the sperm is deposited here in the cervix. So this is marked with the number one in the picture. 
And if you perform intrauterine insemination, then the sperm is directly deposited here in the uterine cavity. It is marked with number two here in the picture. Let me now answer the question, who can actually benefit from artificial insemination? Um, well, actually, as a general guideline, we can say that couples who have not conceived naturally after 12 months of trying, if the female partner is younger than 35 years, or after six months of trying, if the woman is older than 35 years old. In these cases, artificial insemination um, might be a successful treatment option. Further indications are couples that have been diagnosed with unexplained infertility or when the male partner is diagnosed with minor sperm deficiencies regarding the sperm motility or the sperm count. In the pictures here on the right hand side, you can see the difference um, of normal sperm count in contrast to low sperm count. And in the picture below, you see um, um, pictures or uh, the difference between uh, motility types. So this gray sperm is indicating uh, progressively forward moving sperm and the black one is showing circular movement and this type of sperm is not able to make the long journey to the egg and uh, is not likely to um, end in a pregnancy. So um, artificial insemination um, um, that includes donor semen is also a good option for single women and for lesbian couples. The main contraindication for or against artificial insemination is blocked or damaged um, fallopian tubes as this condition prevents fertilization. And as we have heard before, fallopian tubes is the place where sperm and eggs should meet. Furthermore, artificial insemination is not suitable for women suffering from severe endometriosis and severe ovulatory disorders. And in cases of severe male infertility, ICI and IUI can only be performed when you use um, donor sperm. Let us now see how an artificial insemination is performed and which equipment you need. First of all, in, time, in, in terms of timing, there are two options. Um, the insemination can be timed based on a woman's natural cycle, or it can be in concert with an ovulation induction cycle. And it should be performed close to the time of ovulation. And ideally, the sperm sample is already, um, or the sperm is already awaiting the egg close, closely, shortly before the ovulation takes place. Um, the procedure itself, it is relatively simply and it takes only a few minutes once the semen sample is ready. Um, the treatment is usually performed in a clinician's office where the woman takes place on the examination table and then um, the medical doctor or the nurse inserts a speculum into the vagina in order to be able to see the cervix and to locate it. Um, the semen sample then, it is drawn up into an insemination catheter that is attached to a syringe. And this catheter, it is made of um, soft plastic material and it looks like a narrow tube. Um, with the ICI, um, the semen sample is deposited into the cervix and you have to use washed or unwashed ejaculate. Whereas for the IUI, where you place um, the semen sample directly into the uterine cavity, you need to use washed sperm. And this is, um, it has to be a sample where a part of the ejaculate, the seminal plasma, has been removed already before because seminal plasma can cause um, severe crampings in the uterus and can even lead to collapse. Um, so you have to perform a um, um, sperm separation process for the IUI and with ICI and in nature this process is done by the cervix and its mucus. So far we have been talking about, of, uh, about a lot of uh, theoretical um, details and now it's my pleasure to uh, show you how it looks like in nature. 
So um, at the time of ovulation, an egg is released from the ovary right into the fallopian tube. And in this picture, you can see here right in the middle, this is an egg. And it is surrounded by a huge amount of smaller cells, the cumulus cells. And they help the egg to mature and to grow and to develop. And the whole structure together, it is called cumulus oocyte complex. In the next picture, you see um, the same situation. So here you have your cumulus cells and they're uh, densely attached to each other. And these tiny structures, this one and this one and here and here, that is actually your sperm. And they are trying hard to make their way through the cumulus cells in order to reach the egg. And only very few um, are able really to make that and, and um, to reach the egg because it is an exhausting process. And uh, the final step is when they meet the egg, they have to overcome the last barrier, the eggshell that is also called sona pellucida. And here you can see some sperm, this one and here and here and also here, these guys have managed. And this candidate here was the fastest one and it is um, actually um, most likely to penetrate the egg and to eventually lead to successful fertilization. So now that you have been able to watch the miracle of fertilization, let's come back to um, some more facts about the insemination and compare artificial insemination to other treatment types. Um, IUI and ICI, they are affordable and non-invasive treatment options and they increase the likelihood of fertilization as sperm is deposited closer to the egg. Um, in contrast to other treatment types like IVF or ICSI, um, they are less expensive as in general, no hormone stimulation, uh, no surgery and no embryo culture in the IVF laboratory is needed. It is an easy method that can be optimized with um, ovulation induction if necessary. But on the other hand, we have to say that it is also the treatment type with the lowest success rates. So in terms of pregnancy rates, um, an insemination cycle has um, a likelihood of um, achieving a pregnancy of eight to 14%. So in general, um, several insemination cycles are needed in order to get pregnant. And under optimal conditions, IVF and ICSI, um, they have um, a three times higher chances to um, end in a pregnancy. In terms of success rates, if we uh, directly compare ICI and IUI, uh, the intrauterine insemination is uh, slightly better. It is a little bit more successful and this might be the case because you use washed sperm where you have already selected the best sperm, the fastest moving sperm, and you place it directly into the uterine cavity, so a little bit closer to the egg. And you um, are able to bypass the cervix and its mucus and therefore can negate any problems related to that. The success rates of artificial insemination are um, influenced by numerous factors. So for example, if you seek for professional assistance, um, a medical doctor, fertility doctor is able to control and, and monitor um, the menstrual cycle. He, he or she can um, analyze the hormone levels and control the growth of the eggs and the fo follicles by ultrasound scans. Um, another important factor that influences the outcome is the ovarian reserve. Um, women cannot produce new eggs. They have a stock, a fixed stock of eggs in their ovaries and this stock is created already before birth and it varies in size. Um, so there are women um, having only a, a small ovarian reserve and some are really lucky and have a good ovarian reserve. The ovulation patterns also matters. Um, 
um, uh, the best prerequisite is given when you have a normal and regular menstrual cycle. And of course, sperm quality is important too. Um, you, you get the best results when you are able to inseminate at least an amount of 5 million progressively forward moving sperm. Then the timing of the, of the insemination, we have heard already before that you might have the best outcome when um, the insemination procedure takes place just slightly before the ovulation um, occurs so that the sperm are already awaiting the egg in the fallopian tube. And um, maybe the most crucial factor that has um, the biggest influence on the outcome of any type of fertility treatment is the patient's age. So in this slide, I would like to present you the um, results of a scientific study showing the correlation between maternal age and miscarriage in IUI cycles. On the, on the right hand side, you can see in the graphic um, a blue and a purple curve and the blue curve shows you um, the slightly decrease of um, pregnancy rates um, with increasing age. And in contrast, you can see that the purple curve, it increases tremendously when a woman gets older. So this is the miscarriage rate and we can have further look at the details. So as an example, um, a woman in her early 30s, um, she has a miscarriage rate of 16.4%. 10 years later, at the age of 42 or even older, the miscarriage rate is already 30% higher. That means that every, almost every second pregnancy will end in a miscarriage. And this development is due to the fact that um, women cannot produce new eggs and that the eggs continuously age and lose their quality. So egg quality is really a big issue in terms of fertility treatment and pregnancy outcome. So the conclusion from this slide is, um, if possible, try not to postpone your pregnancy and try to conceive before you turn 35. My further take home messages for the artificial insemination are, if you cannot use your partner's sperm, if that is not an option due to severe um, male um, sperm deficiencies, then you can use donor sperm from a sperm bank. And it is a good option as uh, the donor is tested for infectious diseases and the most common hereditary diseases. In terms of parental rights, it's also a good choice um, to use an official donor and it's better than taking a private person or a friend. Um, regarding the risk of infection for IUI and ICI, sterile technique is needed as uh, the cervix and the cavity of the uterus is entered. And last but not least, if you have not conceived after six cycles, then it is um, a good idea if you consider other treatment options like IVF and ICSI. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have enjoyed this part of our Cryos webinar series and I wish you all the best for your journey to your own family. Thank you very much. Take care and goodbye. Thank you, Cornelia, for the wonderful explanation of the first two treatments. And now we will move on to Chris, who will explain the last two uh, treatments, IVF and ICSI. Thank you, Mila. Hi everyone and welcome to our talk about IVF and ICSI. My name is Christodoulos and I am an embryologist working for Christ International Sperm and Egg Bank, helping people fulfill their dreams for a family. My talk will be about in vitro fertilization and intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Um, I will try to connect the dots through the, this timeline and help you understand what happens with IVF and ICSI. Uh, all site collection, insemination, fur checks, and embryo development and transfer or cryopreservation are all lab procedures that have been around as assisted reproductive technologies for many years and are used worldwide at fertility clinics. 
assisted reproductive technologies, or ART for short, involve fertility treatments uh, of IVF and ICSI. People with uh, subfertility concerns seek advice from fertility specialists to find the most probable solution for them. We employ um, the assisted reproductive technologies when natural conception is not an option anymore. Our intention is to replace the natural process and collect as many oocytes as possible, a few million moving sperm, and perform the insemination in the lab under optimum conditions. These technologies require the skills of gynecologists, nurses, and embryologists working under a dedicated medical and laboratory environment. As you can see in the image, during an oocyte retrieval, the doctor holds the ultrasound probe with an aspiration needle, goes through the vagina, and ends up in the ovary to harvest the oocytes with the help of a suction pump, which collects them into lab tubes. When several hours have passed from ovulation trigger, which is a hormonal boost for the follicles to help the oocytes finally mature enough, we perform the oocyte retrieval. A few hours after the oocyte retrieval, we proceed with an insemination. In conventional IVF, 15,000 or more swimming sperm are added to a lab dish together with the oocytes. Sperm need to push through the cumulus oocyte complexes, a group of cells surrounding the oocytes playing a vital role in maturation and eventually penetrate the oocyte. Immediately, we move these dishes in a warm and safe and optimized environment where fertilization may happen. And we come back 16 to 18 hours later to check uh, for the desired results or we all wish for under the microscope. Once we do uh, the first check and we verify that the oocytes are fertilized, we must uh, let them grow to embryos a few more days. This way, natural uh, selection occurs, meaning that the embryos of reduced quality will not develop properly while in a satisfactory development, we may end up uh, to embryo transfer or embryo cryopreservation. The picture on this slide um, shows some of the equipment we use in the IVF lab. On the left, we have the stereoscope, which helps us identify the uh, oocytes and the sperm. In the middle here, uh, you can see the working cabinet or uh, the lamina flow hood, as we call it, where we perform the retrieval and evaluate uh, the maturity of the oocytes afterwards. And on the right over here, these are the lab dishes where we place the oocytes and the sperm and the glass pasteur pipettes we use to handle the oocytes. Now let's talk about what we expect to see when doing IVF. Um, it is understood that one in two cycles may not result in pregnancy. Uh, while on the other hand, if pregnancy is achieved, it may not produce a live birth. Many people undergo IVF uh, with their own sperm and oocytes, but approximately 10% of the cycles are performed with donor sperm and oocytes or by combining own donor, own and donor gametes. Um, these options are available when people are unlikely to conceive with their own sperm or oocytes, and the chances are of getting pregnant uh, with donation are like those uh, who use entirely their own. Moving to the other assisted reproductive technology, intracytoplasmic sperm injection, uh, ICSI is advised after several IVF uh, failures or uh, in the presence of severe sperm abnormalities. So this means that the sperm, for example, can have a defect that might affect their ability to fertilize an oocyte or even create normal embryos. 
some extra skills are needed for the, from the embryologist as it requires micromanipulation, handling of the oocytes and sperm uh, under special equipment in the lab. The reason is that uh, we must isolate only a single sperm for each oocyte, either for, uh, from fresh ejaculate or frozen material or sometimes from surgical retrieval. Then we carefully inject it in the middle of the oocyte and repeat the process uh, for all available oocytes. Following the same concept with uh, IVF, uh, we proceed to insemination after a few hours have passed from outside collection. Um, ICSI requires that uh, the oocytes be prepared uh, before injecting them with sperm. This preparation is called denudation uh, in, in our field and we use a special enzyme to remove the cumulus complexes that surround the oocytes. As soon as all the surrounding uh, cells are gone, we evaluate and record the maturation stage of the oocytes, uh, which is something that uh, mirrors the quality. Only mature oocytes are injected with one potentially uh, suitable sperm. Then at once, we move the dishes in a warm and safe and optimized environment and we come back uh, 16 to 18 hours later to check for the desired result we all wish under the microscope. Once we do the first check the next day and we verify that the oocytes are fertilized, we must let them grow to embryos a few more days. As with conventional IVF, uh, with a satisfactory development, we may end up to embryo transfer or uh, embryo cryopreservation. The pictures on this slide show, so show some of the equipment we use in the lab during ICSI. On the left uh, here, we have the stereoscope, which helps us identify the oocyte in the sperm. Uh, next to it, you can see the microscope and the micromanipulator, a system that gives us control to ultra sensitive movements. The microscope magnifies the sperm and the oocyte so we can see clearly during injection with the micromanipulator handling device. We use, of course, the working cabinet or the laminar flow hood to do all the handling. And on top, you see the lab dishes where we place the oocytes and the sperm and the fine injection and holding needles uh, we use during injection uh, with the micromanipulator. Embryologists need to be highly skilled and technically talented in ICSI to get the positive results everybody wants. So um, what other factors affect the ICSI procedure? Uh, firstly, morphology, which is about the size and shape of the sperm. When we do the procedure under the microscope, we should select only the morphologically normal moving sperm. And just before injection, we break the tail uh, of the sperm with the fine injection needle I showed you earlier, bringing the movement of the sperm to a stop. Um, motility, another factor, is the capability of sperm to movement. In uh, cases where we cannot find normal moving sperm, uh, we use special techniques that help us identify viable sperm, cells not moving, but actually still have life in them. Only then we can uh, do uh, the injection and go ahead. Um, there are a lot of parameters that affect the ICSI procedure, but some of the most important ones are temperature and pH of the media solution in the dish, uh, which if left uncontrolled may alter the result of insemination or even the embryo development. But overall, ICSI has similar um, fertilization rates with conventional IVF. Everyone has questions about new and exciting topics, so I tried to gather some typical concerns mentioned by patients uh, when they embark on their fertility journey. Um, 
what are the success rates for IVF versus ICSI? Overall, the outcome and the success rates are similar when we compare these technologies. But there are other factors like the quality uh, and the number of embryos transferred or the lining of the womb, which reflects the condition of the endometrium that may have some impact. What are the costs? Well, keep in mind that IVF costs are different between clinics and that you may need to spend some extra 20, 25% for ICSI as it's a difficult procedure that requires unique skills. Is it possible to see my embryos growing in the lab, in the dish? Um, yeah, some clinics may offer you the rare opportunity to view online through a dedicated web portal, how your embryos are growing through time-lapse microscopy imaging. That's a novel way of undisturbed culture that is connected to computer systems. Um, what does freeze-all cycle mean? Um, if your fertility clinic ever suggests uh, following a freeze-all cycle, it means that all normal embryos created through IVF or ICSI can be cryopreserved and transferred at the later stage, at your convenience or uh, when you are ready to extend your family after giving birth. What if uh, I want to use a donor? Finally, if you decide to use donor sperm uh, or oocytes through a reproductive tissue bank like cryos, you will have access to the medical history or other information of the donors in advance. And remember, donors will never have any parental or legal rights uh, to the children being born through this process. Um, eventually, Cryos is next to you to help you choose the right one before going ahead with your treatment. So um, to summarize my talk, let me give you a few take home messages about the procedure of IVF and ICSI. Thousands of progressively moving sperm are essential to perform IVF. When severe sperm abnormalities are present or after a couple have had several IVF failures, we uh, recommend doing ICSI. Success rates are almost similar in these two assisted reproductive technologies. Many couples with otherwise untreatable infertility have given birth to healthy children. So remember, if you cannot use your own gametes, treatment with donor sperm or oocytes is always a reliable and a successful choice. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you enjoyed my talk about IVF and Nix. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Chris, and thank you all for your excellent presentations. I'm sure we've provided our viewers today with a very good overview of the different options uh, within the field of assisted reproduction technologies. If you're watching today and have any more questions about fertility treatment with donor sperm or donor eggs, please contact us at uh, cryos at dk at cryosinternational.com. Thank you all for joining us.